Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to replace a bad or a broken uh, pulley belt. Uh, the process is really easy. Uh, there's two of them we have to worry about. We've got the one on the X and the one on the Y axis. I wanted to do this video because I saw a couple postings on Facebook where people were trying to replace the belt on the X axis. They went as far as uh, going to buy another belt because they said it wouldn't fit and they had the same issue with the new one. What the actual issue was was they didn't actually remove the tension from the belt. So if you don't do that, the belt's going to appear as not long enough. Uh, so you've got to actually um, kind of take the tension off of the belt so we can actually connect it to the extruder or to the uh, build plate. And then once it's connected, then we've got to put the tension back on the belt to keep it tight. Uh, so we'll go ahead and walk through the whole process. I'll show you how to replace uh, both belts. Uh, the process is pretty much the same. Uh, there's some differences, so I'll walk through both of them, but it's pretty much the same. Um, now I'm using an Ender 3 Pro here as the example, but this process applies to pretty much any 3D printer that's set up like this. Now, the bolts might be a little bit different and a uh, slightly different setup, but the process is going to be the same. All right, so if you guys have any questions, um, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you. And make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. All right, guys, I went ahead and zoomed in on the printer so we can go ahead and walk through the process. A couple things here. Um, one, my belts are good, uh, so I'm not actually going to be replacing them. But I will uh, go ahead and uh, take everything apart, take the belt off, and uh, reattach it like it was a new belt. And two, um, you're going to need a really two tools one of them is more optional you're going to need an allen wrench like this one that will fit these bolts here and then a pair of needle nose pliers or something along those lines um, this is optional i like to use them when i'm trying to tighten this back up uh, you'll see here in a couple minutes um, when i actually go ahead and do the process but i kind of use it to push out the piece here and keep tension on it while i'm tightening down the bolts so now let's talk about uh, how the belts go bad and what that can actually do to your print. Uh, I'll do a better close up on the belt here in a minute once I get one of them off and kind of show you the teeth. But those teeth are running on the stepper motor and if any of those starts to uh, wear out or get damaged, uh, you can have uh, the actual belt kind of slip and uh, cause uh, incorrect movements or um, no movement at all when they're supposed to be so think about it if you have a gear with a chain uh, think of like a bike chain um, if the actual chain wasn't catching on the gear when it's turning uh, you could potentially be turning uh, the gear and not the chain uh, which uh, could happen in this case with the stepper motor the stepper motor could be turning and not actually moving uh, the x or y axis as it's supposed to and that could cause major issues with the print so if you're starting to see any uh, huge issues with uh, layering or uh, layers being off things like that i would start to look at the belt first all right so let's go ahead and uh, take off the x-axis belt and then we'll kind of uh, talk about that a little bit and i wanted to give you a better close-up on the actual teeth so um, we'll do that here in a minute as well all right so first thing we're going to want to do is take off these two bolts here or loosen them sorry don't take them off um, you just want to loosen it enough so you can push this in and then once that's done we'll be able to go underneath and then pull the metal uh, off of the actual bracket and then just slide the belt out so let's go ahead and do that you don't need much here just a couple really like a half a turn on both of them and that should loosen it up quite a bit Then you can see it kind of slides in. Now from here, um, you can just go ahead and pull the belt off of the uh, extruder. And then same on the other side. So when I was mentioning the Facebook example earlier, what was happening was they had uh, this piece still all the way out. And then they were trying to feed this onto the bracket and it was too far away um, you've got to take the tension off of it just like any pulley system in order to uh, do any work on it all right so when you're taking off the belt you just take this off on both sides and then you can kind of pull this up and around and then it just pops right off here we're gonna to have to go under the wheels so you kind of have to turn it a little bit and play with that 
but here's the belt. All right, so I zoomed in on the belt here, and as you can see, there's these teeth mark that go across the entire belt. Um, if you look at the stepper motor, I'll be able to show you better on the uh, y-axis when we get this off, but there's um, the pulley, which has teeth on it as well. Those teeth catch the belt here and then uh, turn it, causing the X or Y axis to move. If these start to wear down or um, get any type of cracking or breaking in them, that can cause uh, serious issues with the print. So I wanted to zoom in and kind of talk about the why here for a minute instead of just doing a video on replacing it because the process isn't difficult if you know what you're doing, but understanding the why I think is important. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom back out and I will show you how to put this new belt back on. So assuming this was a new belt, this would be the process to put it back on. All right, now that you got your new belt, what you're going to do is feed it through the top here first. We'll feed it under the wheels and kind of rub, run the wheels over them. Just be careful not to damage them. Then once that's across, you can pull this through and then you will fish it through uh, this side here and then back around. Uh, once you have that done, you're going to make sure that you're catching the grooves on the stepper motor unless you're going to have issues. All right. All right, so it's kind of difficult to feed from the single. I'm going to jump to the other side real quick. Once that's through, we're going to, like I said, we're going to want to make sure it's on the wheel of uh, the pulley here. Uh, another thing, if you're having issues, you could take these four screws off here and then um, you won't have to worry about trying to feed it through here. You can just set it on the pulley. But in this case, I didn't think it was worth it. It wasn't that much of an issue. All right, so now that we got that through, we'll feed it back through on the bottom. And then we can go ahead and pull this through and then tighten it to the bottom of the extruder frame, like so. Um, you'll see the grooves when you take them off. The, they stand out quite a bit. It's just a slot in the metal. One goes on one side, one goes on the other side. All right, now let me jump back over to this side and we'll connect the other one. All right, so here this pulley is just round and smooth. So all we have to do is just make sure it's sitting on there. Um, so that's easy, especially because it's fully exposed there. Uh, and then go ahead and feed this across and then slide it into the metal slot. Goes right in with no issues and we're good to go. Now we gotta tighten this back up. So. Like I was mentioned before, I like to use a pair of needle nose pliers, kind of go behind the pulley and just um, catch the bolt there and open it up a little bit just to keep tension. And then we'll just go through and tighten one of these up and then we can tighten the other one. All right, so now you just wanna make sure that you have enough tension on the belt and that things kind of move freely, which they do. And that's all there is to it. So that's the process to swap out the belt on the X axis. Let's go ahead and walk through the Y axis really quick. Most of it's the same. Uh, you just have to work underneath the bill plate. All right, guys, I went ahead and turned the printer here. Uh, what we're gonna to wanna to do is loosen up these four screws. There's two on this side and two on the other side. Uh, if you if you're working with a different printer, it might be a different setup a little bit. Uh, you might only have uh, one screw uh, that kind of pulls the piece out and tighten it back in. I've seen some that have uh, one screw with a nut on the other side you have to loosen up. I've seen some that only have two on one side, none on the other side. Um, so they're set up all pretty much different, but the concept is the same. You're gonna have some sort of system on one side that controls the tension of the belt. You have to loosen the bolts up so you can get the tension off of the belt. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, that side's done. Let's do the other side. All right, now that those are loose, you can kind of push in on this. 
so it takes the tension off and then you can go under the bed here uh, it will have let me get this piece out of the way all right so now we can go under the bed and disconnect it i'm going to turn the printer on its side so that we can see that i'll try to see it at least all right so underneath the bed here we've got this metal frame and then we've got the um, belt kind of in a groove here so if we just knock the belt up it should be able to pull it out and it is kind of a pain so if you can't get it another option you have is um, you can take off this actual top aluminum plate here and then you'll be able to get straight to it um, i am having a couple issues here so i'm just going to go that route so let me go ahead and set this back down uh, it's kind of, it's really a pain if you can get in there great if you have small hands even better um, but if you can't we can just take these off and then lift this up but i'm going to do that um for i guess simplicity and so i can show you what it actually looks like all right with those off we can lift this up we've got the four screws here and then the spring um, you also have your heating element and a thermistor attached here so make sure that you're not um, moving things around too much because you don't want to damage those that'd be a bad day all right so i'm just going to kind of set this off to the side a little bit just like that um, i'm just grabbing all my parts here just so i know where they're at if you guys are interested in the spring and wheel upgrade uh, let me know um, and also again you could have done this without taking off the top plate but i wanted to show you what the actual grooves look like on the frame so i figured it was worth it um, and it's easier to get into this because it's really a pain trying to work under the plate all right so what we need to do here is kind of pull this up and then turn it so that it slides out of the metal groove there and then same on this side and then you can feed this down if you have issues you kind of move it off to the side there uh, so you're not working with the pulley all right so that's the process to remove the belt now i'll go ahead and reconnect it all right first thing i wanted to show you though was um, this pulley so let me go ahead and turn the camera off I'll come around to the other side and kind of get a good close up on it. But this is going to be the pulley on the stepper motor with the grooves that I was talking about. So you can, as you can see here, um, you've got the stepper motor and you've got the pulley that's a compression fit. Some of them will have uh, screws here, uh, just a little, uh, just basically like little bolts that go part way in to keep uh, the pulley on tight. Um, with those, you can adjust where the pulley stands. With these compression fit ones, you can't. Um, but these have less of a chance of moving around on you. All right, but you can see here that this has the grooves. And then if you look at the belt, it will go on the groove like this. And then when it's turning, it tur moves the belt. So without the grooves or if the belt's damaged, uh, you're going to have issues potentially with it uh, moving the axis the way you want it to. All right, so now let's go ahead and change the camera angle back and we'll walk through putting the new belt on. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and attach the back side here first. So I'll just feed this around like this. It will slide in uh, long ways and then kind of turn it so that it sticks. And you wanna make sure that the grooves are facing uh, towards the front of the printer or in downwards. All right, so with that tight, uh, we can go ahead and feed this back around to the pulley and then uh, down through the bottom of this. Now you want to make sure that you don't have any of the wires in the way. So let me go to the other side so I can feed this right. Over on the other side here and we'll just make sure that 
we're not actually messing with the wires for the uh, stopper or anything like that, then we're gonna wanna feed this through. All right guys, now that that's through, uh, we will take the belt that came out on this side and just feed it up. And now we're gonna wanna make sure that it ends up landing on the pulley, but you can go around it in order just to feed it up because uh, it can be a pain sometimes. All right, now that that's up, we can go ahead and connect this to the frame as so. And make sure that we're still on the pulley in the back, um, which we weren't, but we're good now. All right, so let's go ahead and put the build plate back on and then we can um, go ahead and pull this back out and tighten it up. All right, now that those are back on, we can go ahead and put the surface back on. Um, one thing to point out, uh, if you did go this route, you are gonna have to re-level the build plate. Um, just because we took all of it out, um, it's gonna mess up anything that was there, so. Uh, that doesn't take long, but it is something to keep in mind. All right, so now that this is all back together, we can go ahead and pull this piece back out, kind of put the tension back on it. And with this printer, you can see kind of where the grooves were before. Um, so you can kind of put it back in the same spot. You can also try to use um, pliers or something if you needed to put a little bit more tension on it, similar to what I did up here, but it's just not needed. Just want to make sure it's nice and tight though, and still on the pulley in the back. And then go ahead and tighten this back down. And make sure that you and then we can make sure that your build plate moves as it should um, that's all there is to it the process isn't hard it's just more understanding the uh, mechanics around it making sure that you are uh, releasing the tension on the belt um, for the axis that you're working on unless you're going to just have issues if you have any questions go ahead and leave a comment below thanks all right guys, so there you have it. That's the process to replace the uh, belt on the X and Y axis. Um, like I mentioned in the video, there's a couple things that might cause it. Uh, over time, the rubber will break down. Uh, you could have had something get jammed in there and kind of causing it to break or get damaged. Or it could just be normal wear and tear on some of the cheaper belts if the groove isn't actually uh, catching the key, uh, teeth on the uh, stepper motors. You can have issues there as well. Um, but it's not hard, the belts aren't expensive to replace. So if you are seeing some uh, odd behavior with it, I would definitely look into replace it. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. Thanks.